Well, obviously with this morning as an example, you will see that I sometimes find myself a little distracted. Sometimes I find myself in the position of being also slightly overbooked and still trying to get everything squeezed in just as we are to do. And I have a feeling this is not unfamiliar. I'm sure many of you experience the same. I can think of a time a few months ago when I was at home on our big desktop computer in front of me watching a webinar, an educational webinar, and I had my laptop sitting in my lap writing what I was gonna say the following Sunday. And then I additionally had my cell phone right there just in case anyone sent me a text or an email and I needed to respond immediately. So in that moment, I was doing three different tasks all at the same time, and I am sure that I was not fully present in a one of them. And I'm not alone, not in the least. Not too many years ago, a man named Tom Friedman had a column in the op-ed page of the New York Times and it was called the taxi driver. He told of being driven in a cab in Paris for about an hour. And during this one hour drive, he and the driver did six things. The driver had driven the cab, of course. He had talked on his cell phone and even watched a video really scary. Whereas he, the passenger, had been riding in the cab, working on a column on his laptop computer and listening to his iPod. He said there was only one thing we never did, talk to each other. With a new age of interaction, we have seen an increase in disconnectedness in our lives disconnecting from one another. Encouraged by the convenience of technology and the endless expectations we put on one another, we are in a constant state of busyness. Last week, this is a confession. Last week, I found myself on the couch with our daughter watching a cartoon, which she is discovering are pretty cool things. She was cuddling with me and we were sharing lots of kisses. She was in a really sweet mood that day. It was great. Then, in the midst of watching this cartoon, she got up to go and get her iPad and brought it up onto the couch with her, excitedly playing the alphabet game that she loves. Here's the confession. It wasn't long, before I had my phone out, checking emails, looking and reading on my phone. And upon my husband coming home and seeing this, he pointed out that neither one of us was paying attention to the other. We were busying ourselves with other things, things that in the grand scheme didn't really matter. He was right. <laughs> You were right. And so easily we slip into worlds of distraction without even noticing that we've gone there. Distractions come to us, and they come to us differently. We can find ourselves in the exact same situation and find different distractions and different experiences. No person is the same. No person in this room will have the exact same reaction to the sermon being preached today. We will all experience it differently. And today we come to a text, a very short text, which tells the story of two sisters who experience one situation completely differently. Two stories happening in one place, and both with something to say. 
At this point in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus has begun his journey along the road to Jerusalem. He is on his way to his betrayal and eventual death. And along the road, he decides to stop in and visit with Mary and Martha. He was a completely unexpected guest. Completely unexpected. So not only are the ladies surprised by this visit, but they are instantly in the throes of making the visit as hospitable as they can, as Jesus is the most important guest they will probably ever host. And instantaneously, we see two sisters embark on two different experiences under one roof. Let's start with Mary, the sister Mary, and her experience. She, like Martha, is thrilled to have Jesus. Mary, in fact, is so excited that she simply cannot leave his side. She is attached to Jesus and soaking up everything she can. And Mary, she apparently is comfortable with pushing boundaries because she has the audacity, the audacity to sit at the feet of Jesus. She sits at his feet. Sitting at the feet of a rabbi was a distinguished position only afforded to men. For the thousands of years leading up to this moment, a woman had not been in that position. If this scene took place outside of the confines of their home in the public, onlookers would likely chastise Mary to the fullest extent for doing something so incredibly despicable. They would speak against her actively, seek to return her to her proper place and ensure that she was so discouraged that she would never attempt something so brazen again. The audacity. So within the walls of her home, Mary assumes a position that has never and will never and shall never be afforded to a woman. What Mary discovers in her need to push these boundaries of her world, she finds complete, unbridled, unrestricted, empowering, support. Jesus praises Mary for taking her rightful place at his feet. Jesus in that moment uplifts a woman to places reserved only for men. She is empowered to become at the level of Jesus's disciples. She's empowered as one engaged in ministry, a ministry that was reserved for men. And even though this story of Mary and Jesus exists, even though Jesus evidently placed women as equals to men, our world still struggles. We continue to draw boundaries around women and limit them, but not only women, but minorities, the elderly, the young, and the poor. We, ourselves, you and I, have laid out boundaries in careful form to exclude people from the feet of Jesus. This gospel story is forgotten when it comes to uplifting all people into equal roles of ministry. All. Our call to break down barriers is forgotten in the hustle and bustle of our lives. And we continue to draw lines in the sand of those who are in and those who are out. We, you and I, 
should be calling people in from the margins of our world, bringing them in and knowing all people are the same. Once we have gathered everyone in, we are to delete and erase and eliminate the margins that we have created, ensuring that all people come to their place of welcome. So to all the women, especially those that have never heard these words, you matter. You are uplifted to lead in ministry in this world. When you serve communion, when you pray enormously beautiful words, when you provide care in hospitals or as an elder, maybe even if you are called to ordained ministry. You are celebrated and called by God the same as any other. Your leadership, all of yours, is empowered by this gospel, not beaten down. You matter. And so does Martha, our other sister in this story. And even though it seems like Jesus is showing preference to Mary, he deeply cares for Martha as well. Upon Jesus' arrival, Martha, in her excitement, moves quickly to begin to prepare a meal. Can't you picture it? Unannounced guests knocking on your door. The hustle and bustle to find the ingredients in the pantry flipping through the pages of the cooking book, desperate to find something that'll work, something that will please your guests, likely moving around, finding pots and pans, and getting everything in order to make something to serve Jesus on his journey. Martha, she is the epitome of hospitality in her work fulfilling thousands of years of traditions all the way back to Abraham and Sarah. And you know, you can't blame her for thinking her sister might give her a hand. You can't blame her. So Martha, after she's preparing and bustling around and getting everything as perfect as it can be for their guests, she notices that Mary has not joined her in the kitchen. She hasn't been back there at all. She peeks out, likely, and sees Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus with no apparent intention to come in and help her. She needed help. And I can think of many instances, and I'm sure you can too, of being the last one left in the kitchen with all of the dishes yet to do. Or maybe you're left alone to take care of dinner entirely while a group of friends gathers outside. I feel like we've all been in a situation a time or two where we have been left alone with all the work. Slowly but surely, and we can understand this, Martha's frustrations begin to grow and grow, growing to the point where she had to say something. Martha comes out ready to get some answers and maybe some forced help from her sister. Rather than approaching her sister directly, she seeks the support of Jesus in the argument, trying to get him on her side. She says, don't you care? Don't you care? Putting him on the spot to ride alongside of Mary. After all, Martha was doing what was asked of her by her world, providing immense hospitality to Jesus. Jesus responds to her, that her sister is just as she should be and has chosen the better part. But it should be immediately noted that Jesus is not chastising Mary, Martha for not sitting at his feet like Mary. He is not 
chastising her for being in the kitchen and being busy. He is calling her to a place of refocus. Jesus is not speaking to the busy, hospitable Martha. He is speaking to the anxious and angry Martha. Martha has become so anxious about the perfection of this meal and about her lack of help that Jesus calls her to let go of that anxiety and to take over her preparations, refocusing on why she is so diligent to serve. Hospitality is not just about sitting and having a meal beautifully prepared. It is also about being truly and honestly present with people. Anxious and troubled service strips us all of the joy of serving Jesus at the heart of who we are. And Jesus is calling Martha to keep God at the center of her service and not to be overcome by feelings that are separating her from her true work and her true intention. These two ladies, they had a vastly different experience of their visit with Jesus, but both were celebrated by Jesus and loved truly. Both women were called, called to focus on what matters most, called to focus on God, and their equal call to serve. In a thoroughly, thoroughly busy world, surrounded by distractions and worries that remove us from our connectedness to God, we are called to refocus ourselves on what really matters. Keeping God at the center of our lives and ensuring that all people are uplifted to a world where they are loved equally and embraced by God. We, you and I, we will delete the margins that we have placed in our world. We will stand up for those who have not been welcomed and we will welcome them with immense hospitality. So when we find ourselves, which we will, anxious or angry, or frustrated by the distractions that will inevitably come to us, let us all refocus, love all as Jesus did, and invite all people to sit at his feet. Amen.